Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture and today we will discuss about for each loop. So this is the rule which we have already built. I will comment everything. There is one shortcut key which is control backslash. After selecting we can hit control backslash and it will comment everything which is selected. And now I can write the for each function which is for each a bank for each. Inside this we have two parameters items and expressions. So wherever uh, items is basically the list right you can see the definition here items list of variant it's the type of this item and array or data set containing the items over which to iterate so the number of iteration will depend on this items right the length of this items so if i'll write items here and uh, i will create one array and if i'll only write some these values so whatever will be the length of this array the loop will iterate that number of time and the second parameter is expression which is our output and i just need to write some string so when i click on test then you can see i'm getting it seven times because the length of this array is seven right and this is some hard coded string i'm using and if i wanted to use these items so there is a function called fv bank right fv bank so what is this fb fv is basically the function variable this function which we can use inside a function right so you can see whenever i type fv bank then these suggestions are coming so i can use this fv bank inside for each and let's say i wanted to use the item of the array then i can use this fv bank item so whenever i will run this loop now i will get the items of this iteration so with the, with the very first iteration i will get one because one is the item and whatever the item will be i will get it over every iteration so if i'll put some string in between also then the length increase and currently the items are eight with the string also so this will return if i'll write item and if i wanted to get the index then i can check the index you can see index starts from one and it will end at eight right so currently the index is coming here it does like whatever will be the values inside this array we don't have to worry about it we are getting the index here so whatever will be our logic we can try to use these functions and implement the logic for example i wanted to check if the item is last or not then i can use this one it will return me the boolean so you can see i'm getting true in the in the very first uh, array element you can see and the last one from the second till last i'm getting false because only this item is first and all these items are not first so likewise we have other functions we have identifiers index is first is last item and item count so item count will return the same thing because the item count is 8 so it will return 8 every time it will not change it's static and the other things is identifier so identifier is also very important and we will also see these identifiers in record type and other record links at various places so what this identifier is so for example let me um, take an example for the database so for example we are working in a database and we have created one table right and the primary key is the unique identifier right so primary key is mandatory in that table and that will be the unique identifier right so in that scenario we use identifiers and here also it means the same if we will be having any identifiers for this particular elements then we will be uh, getting that if not then nothing you can see there is no identifier then we are not getting anything so if we will be using any cdts with identifier i can use this fv bank identifier to get that right so this is how we can make loop and let's say i will write fv bank item and i wanted to concatenate this item with some string so i will write some string let's say test and i will put some space and then you can see this this string is concatenated with every item of this array right so this is a array because it's a looping function the return is also an array right i will get the first item first and then the last item in the last and let's say if i wanted to convert this uh, for each into a single string then i can use two string here right it's just a testing so let's see what will be the result and you can see i'm getting everything inside a single string right but this this is coming because it's a it's running in iteration so just for testing purpose i have done that otherwise 
let's keep it like this only and this is how we can use for each and also right now we have created the array hard coded array but if there is any value in any local variables or any rule input which is already of array type then we can use that and it will iterate accordingly for example let's uncomment this local variable and um, let's remove this let's close the local variable in the expression i'm having this for each and i am already having the comma so let's remove this and let's format this okay item is nothing so i will write local bank one now let's format this you can see i have two local variables local bank one and local bank two and inside for each and where i have put the for each inside the expression the third parameter of local variable at this place right and i'm running this for each i'm using local bank one as a item so it will iterate over this local bank one it's a single item so the, you can see the number of item is one and it's a list of text string because it's only a string that's why the return type is the list of text string so this is what we can do with for each it's a looping statement and uh, we can use uh, this everywhere wherever we can write the expression and we can also save this expression and we can use it anywhere we want in the expression editor so that's all about this function a bank for each